80 years on. Thank you. We now move to the next item of business, which is topical questions. Question one, Michael Russell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I ask the Scottish Government what action it will take to secure lifeline flights from Oban to the islands of Colonsay, Col and Tyree, which are to be withdrawn by the operator from the 16th of May? Minister Derek Mackay. Firstly, I should make very clear that this process being carried out by Argyll and Butte Council does not affect our own public service obligation routes. We will be increasing frequency on the Glasgow to Barra Tyree Campbelltown routes from October following discussions with the communities concerned. We will also take the delivery of the first of our two new aircraft for these routes this Thursday. In respect of the services which operate within Argyll and Butte, Transport Scotland officials have spoken with both the Council and Hebridean Air Services. We understand both parties have reached satisfactory compromises on a number of points but have not yet reached a final agreement. I'm informed in the absence of an agreement, the current operator, Hebridean, had to suspend ticket sales for flights after the uh, end of the current contract period. Although the Council indicated on Saturday that they would run a new tender exercise, I understand they are still exploring options which would avoid that and avoid any break in services. I know that both parties recognise the lifeline nature of these services and I hope and urge that they can reach an agreement shortly. Mr Russell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Minister will know that this is a totally unnecessary dispute, and I am reassured by your answer, in which I know that Hebridean Air Services are keen to continue negotiating, but the Council issued what can only be described as an inflammatory press release on Saturday announcing a new tender process. Is the Minister aware that as recently as the 7th of April, the Hebridean Air Services was named as the preferred bidder with a full mark score for pricing, and on the 24th of April, the Council said it was looking forward to a mutually agreed solution? How could it be that our Gallen Butte Council on Friday afternoon at 4.45 issues an email to the company which introduces new conditions and refuse to accept uh, the tender, given that the service had to be suspended on the 2nd of April by European law? Was that a reasonable and responsible thing for any uh, council to do, given the lifeline nature of these services? Minister. As with any procurement process, the council must operate within the law. They must also consider any potential state aid implications with subsidies of this nature. Ultimately, the council needs to decide a course of action weighing up that advice and the benefits that these services bring to remote communities. Essentially, it is a judgment call for them taking all factors into account. I totally appreciate uh, Michael Russell's concern in this matter, who has raised it uh, with me, and I have had a conversation with the council leader and the chief executive. It would have been wrong for me to interfere with a procurement uh, process, but I think Mr Russell is absolutely right to urge an urgent and satisfactory resolution so that the communities that are concerned are not adversely affected. And my understanding is, as late as today, that uh, it appears we're getting closer to agreement. And that being the case, I think we would all urge Argyll and Butte Council and Hebridean services to reach that resolution and satisfy the local community. Mr Russell. Uh, presiding officer, the gap between the parties is £43,000 on a tender worth £700,000, the price of which has remained unchanged since 2011. Uh, this solution, there is a solution in place. It is not affected by state's aids, which is a Harry Potter type spell that our Gala Butte Council keeps waving whenever anybody challenges them. I would ask the Minister to, if he could, ensure that his officials, and particularly officials from Transport Scotland, play a positive role in helping our Gal and Butte Council to where they should be at the negotiating table and ensuring that this matter is resolved before the withdrawal takes place. Minister. I'm more than happy to, uh, agree. I'm more than happy to uh, agree to that uh, intervention and had said to the Leader of the Council and the Chief Executive uh, last week, if our officials in Transport Scotland could assist, not prejudicing any procurement exercise, then I would be content for that to be the case. And I will once again offer civil servants and officials uh, support to be as proactive as possible, indeed brokerage, if that is so required. Thank you. We have two members who wish to ask a supplementary. Can I say to both these members, the question 
is about secure lifeline flight from Oban to the islands of Colnsey, Col and Tyree. And provided that is what you're supplementary, I'm happy to call you. David Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Um, I fully share uh, Mr uh, Russell's concerns. Will the, will the Minister confirm that if a PSO is not used for 12 months, then it lapses? And will the Minister ask his officials and Dugail and Butte Council to investigate the use of the Regional Air Connectivity Fund, which has helped routes in the Highlands and Islands previously? And finally, does the Minister share my view that a, a new European Commission compliant uh, route development fund uh, will help lifeline services in the future? Minister? Of course, I'm more than happy to explore all of those points and give you more detail. But if I'm frank about the matter, I suspect this is more to do with a uh, negotiating process than any other technical matter. But if, do I think there's a better way to handle such a procurement exercise? Well, I think through how we have handled a procurement exercise, then I think we've certainly learned lessons in the past. And this is out with our control. And this is about the the end of the, the, the negotiation. So I'm more than happy to get back to Mr Stewart with more detail in the areas that he's touched upon in his question. Stuart Stevenson. Um, I wonder if the Minister is aware that Hebridean air services uh, use a different kind of fuel for their aircraft from almost all air services in Scotland. Only Orkney and Shetland uh, use similar fuel and only they pay duty on that fuel. All other air services don't. That's probably a five-figure sum per year for Hebridean air services. Will he raise this anomaly uh, with UK ministers next time he has the opportunity to talk to them so that the field is levelled a little bit for Hebridean air services and indeed Orkney and Shetland? Minister. I can confirm to the Chamber that I wasn't aware of the fuel, fuel specification and don't uh, have the information that he requires to hand, and therefore I'm happy to take it away and to supply further information to the member. Thank you. We now move to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion number 13046 in the name of Mark Griffin on the British Sign Language Scotland Bill. Members may wish to note that British Sign Language interpreters are present in the Chamber and will be signing this debate. Members will also wish to note that the Parliament today received an award from Action on Hearing Loss for a charter mark, which is a nationally recognised accreditation for organisations who offer excellent levels of service and accessibility for people who are deaf or have hearing loss. Can I call on Mark Griffin to speak to move the motion? Mr Griffin, 14 minutes. 